it, I agree to most extent, but I see it a little bit different. They are willing to have the discussion long as the discussion matches exactly what they're saying. Once you're not matching with what someone else is saying, the tools that we use to try to get our understanding across, I think that's what causes the cancel culture. Because if I don't agree with you, we kind of revert back to like schoolyard politics, where if you notice, like, if I'm saying something you don't agree with, instead of sticking to the point, we slide you with something. Oh, because you feel that way because of such and such. Mm -hmm. And then I got to say, oh, you're this way because of such and such. Mm -hmm. Then it becomes not even about the topic. Mm -hmm. It becomes about personal views. And that's when the cancel culture, to me, it seems like it manifests because it's like, yo, I'm saying this, you're saying that once we put that together, it looks like it's conflicting. Mm -hmm. And instead of us saying like, hey, the reason why I see it this way is because of this, this and that, providing logical facts so we can all add it up and see like, hmm, maybe you're right, maybe I'm wrong. Or like, as Gerald says, it comes down to the point of agree to disagree. But before you get to those stages, you got to go through something. You know what I'm saying? You got to go through the process of mathematics. You add in or you subtract in, you're doing multiplying, you're dividing, but you're putting information together. You're putting data together. And that as a people is, I think that's what we need to do. The problem is once we do that, it's the after effect and how we deal with me not understanding what you're saying and you're not understanding what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? That's the problem. The behavior afterwards, I think, is really the biggest problem. Because like, even like with the politics, politics to me is people's relation. You know what I mean? If we look at it as, as if we just cut it down to out of all of the names and all of that is two people who have power to make something happen, saying either I'm going to do this, you're going to do this or whatever, whatever, or this is how it's going to be. Basically how it is if we cut all of that stuff out. You know what I'm saying? And I think like I see like on Facebook a lot of times, I'm not really a politic guy, but I see on Facebook, people are having arguments like, yo, if you vote for Trump, unfriend me. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, think, yeah, yeah. That's a, that's they a don't ignorance. even want to, that, that's the discussion that's is done. Ignorance. That's ignorance. That's saying your party you're done. Right. Yep. I've known ignorance. you for how many years or whatever, you don't, nah, you're done, you're canceled. That's the That's the scary part to me. Yep. I, and, I didn't mean to laugh. And, but that's actually the funny part to me because I find it so ridiculous that 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 because I saw that too. You know, people even went as far as saying you're you're a racist, you're a this, you're an idiot. They, they, it, it was it was personal attacks. I do agree with all of you. I, I like the term coach use as a weapon. Weaponized. Yep. So now let me ask you, brothers, this: whoever <laughs> wants to go first, just chime in. How does with, with 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 the way we all uh, uh, kind of identified what it is and how it comes about, how does it affect black people specifically? It it, be, it becomes dangerous to to <clears throat> us because we we've always been a people that the, the, we just pivot even to like religious ideology. I grew up, and we, I'm going to say I, all of us grew up in an era where you had the 5% Nation of Islam, you had Jehovah Witness, you had the Baptist, you had, everybody was coming to you with their perspective of, of faith, right? And we, used to, we grew up with people debating that, right? Uniform we, 80s, uniform exactly. 80s, uniform 90s. And we sat down and it was a, it was a level of respect and understanding, and sometimes it came to the point where, wow, I never looked at it from that perspective. We're losing that because we're so driven to this social media, just want to be an echo chamber. I think that kind of um, hurts us as Black people because we're soul-based, right? And your soul is what? You, it's, it's something that, that's, that's gut feel, gut-driven, right? So if you just take a concept that I'm not going to hear nobody else's ideology, you become an insensitive person to other people's struggle. Even geographical, everybody's struggle is a little bit different, right? So if to me is 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 equivalent to three of us being right now resided in New York, and one of us is in another state. 
I'm not gonna hear what you got to say because you're not a New Yorker. That's a that's a that's a you understand what I'm saying? Like that that don't even make sense. Well, now it's funny. Hold on, yeah, because we did that back then with hip hop. We all from Brooklyn, and we was like, nah. If 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 you know if if you wasn't that much, but we left hot. ourselves open. It is it did start like that because by nature, man is loyal to self, right? So we're gonna represent with our blocks. We did it. In microcosm, we did it in macro. We did it in different levels. But Snoop Dogg was able to win us over, right? Definitely. Because well, him we and Dre was able to throw something together we that wrong. got back to our soul. We like, yo, whoa. That's what it was. Right? So yep. it's, again, we could be in that mindset. And I, and I, and I flip it where it's, a, it's, it's crazy. C civil rights and, and the internet both helped and hurt Black folks. Right, it helped us because it made everything accessible worldwide. Right, so now when we hear music coming out of the south or music coming from the west coast, it's getting to us quicker than where it used to take six months. And you be like, Yo, you just heard that song that was released six months ago, you're hearing it quicker, right? But but the same thing that's blessing us is the same thing that's killing us because stuff is coming to us so rapid. You don't have a time, a moment to sit down and think and rationalize them. It's too quick. And, and that, yeah, that's that's where I'm at with it right there. Um, yeah. They, yeah. I, I believe that it's uh, the cancel culture is a GMO uh, version, you know, whereas everything is microwave. You have a going back to Lamont's question. You have our people, all types, young, um, some blind or ignorant trying to get woke as they say or what have you and i think that um you're not teaching those individuals the proper steps into coming into um a particular viewpoint uh for example i'm going to ignore I, if you have an ideology or a certain belief i think it's um going back to what jay said in our upbringing it has to be challenged or discussion has to be made. You got to be able to stand on your square. You got to be able to articulate your viewpoint. And then most importantly, you need to hear the opposite side of that exactly. um, and their viewpoint. And you have to take a listen to it, show some discipline, respect, and then come up with something thereafter. Whereas with the cancel culture, you're basically eliminating all of that middle ground and you're teaching people, once again, to react off of your initial emotion and to run with that without, and then one, excuse me, going back to narcissistic behavior, you're not trying to see things from a different lens. You're not trying to hear anything from a different standpoint. And that within itself is going to poison our people, poison our young ones coming up poison those who are trying to get some type of knowledge and improvement in self and things of that nature. Hence my, my GMO reference and it's unhealthy living, if you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Can you repeat the question one more time? Because I wrote something down. I'm trying to figure out why I wrote it down. How does the, this cancel culture affect Black people? All right. Um, Oh, all right. So I said, I think you said I put on there because it plays to our most destructive behavior. So what I mean by that is we can talk smack. That's one thing we can do. You know what I'm saying? One thing we can do, we can make you feel how we want you to feel when we upset. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it goes to, I've heard people say stuff where they talking about how someone smells and the way they say it. Even though it's on the internet, you can smell it. Like they be like, you stink in the way that, you know how we give it up. We give it up ugly. So what I mean by that is once we start on that path of that destructive behavior of the name calling or making people feel worse by what they said and all that, we're the masters of the universe on that. You know what I mean? So I think like once being that we have to be knowledgeable and conscious or be woke about how destructive our first nature is because, and our default is that way. Once we we got to defend ourselves, we're taking out the cancel culture sword. 
You know what I'm saying? Right, right. All and, bets um, is off. Exactly. And I, that, I just want to... Yo, yo, Roscoe, yo, Roscoe, that's that first, that's that first table vibe. Yeah. <laughs> that's the yo, first table in the yeah, lunchroom. It's no joke. Mm -hmm. It's no mm -hmm. joke, yo. And that's why, like, what y'all was saying, they call it... Because you got to really have a viewpoint, know who you are, and how to defend it. Because if you don't, you can just get dissolved. And that's what this cancel culture is, because a lot of times when you actually, the people who are saying these cancel uh, words or whatever, if you talk to them, they don't really have anything to say unless it's with the herd of the wave of information that is exactly. destructive. Exactly. Like a real quick thing, I got canceled one time, right? I, well, I got canceled a lot of times. And because I ask, I ask questions. Like, so this, here's the thing, right? There was a picture, right, of a guy that was in, I think, I don't know, hopefully I ain't mentioned this before, but we were, um, if the guy was going to an NFL game, right? And while he's at the game, soon as they saying, you know, American, you know, they doing the, you know, American songs and all of that yeah, stuff. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, the traditions that they do, the rituals that we do at every game for some reason. They, um, he started taking off his, uh, the team that he had on, and he had all this Ka Kaepernick, Kaepernick um, apparel on, like, you know, the black stuff and all of this. So he, while they're singing that, he's taking it off, and then he just stands up with his hand in the air. <laughs> and everybody's like, that's revolution. <laughs> that's freedom. Power to the people. So I say, what does that have to do with liberation of black people? Mm -hmm. It's a, just a simple question. Because the response he was getting from that was making it seem like the chains were getting snapping off the mind by just looking at the picture. Like, oh, we're free now. Like that Obama was president feeling, like when he first got elected and everybody's like, woohoo, we free, that type of sh that's That's what they were doing. And I couldn't understand it. Because at the end of the day, I'm like, yo, he paid to get into the game. He paid for that apparel. All that money that he paid, um, paid is going to the system that keeps us in this subjugation so how is that a revolutionary act? I was not trying to be mean. I was just trying to get people to help me understand how that is going to free us. That's all I ask. And I got, oh, you're a coon. Get with the time, sir. Oh, you're this. And I kept trying. And every, every sometime they said something, I answered at least 50 questions. I answered 50 responses. And all I kept hearing was, well, if you if you were if you really stood on something, you wouldn't have to keep talking. And I'm trying to tell them, I'm trying to talk to make understanding understood, to figure out why am I such a sellout in your eyes? And I'm 46 years old. You're 25. How do you see me as a sellout? Like because how? Because America, said, America's based on America is based on symbolism. America is based on symbolism, right? So. That's that's the biggest problem that we're facing just as black people because America is based on symbolism. Look how heavy it is. The color of your skin gets you ostracized at a, at a big portion of American history, right? So when you start really thinking about it, if it's just based on symbolism, that's all people was driven off of, right? So now you even the rationale about the American flag, the same people that's toting Constitution doesn't read the bylaw where you're not supposed to use the American flag on anything, right? But you got the National Football League using it in the beginning. It's on their helmets. It's not some, by law, you're not supposed to have it on anything, right? But if you say that, you're unpatriotic, right? So it's the same, it's the ignorance going on that we just bought into as black people, right? Instead of us making our like we we make our own culture in a certain sense, but we still sheeple, right? So, like you're saying, a guy go up and throw his fist up. In '68, it had a meaning because those people was battling a different battle than we. Than but we but were think about them, it now. But think right? about it though. But whoa, whoa, whoa! Don't compare the yeah. two. Because yeah. one, the dude had won a medal. Exactly. He was on the national stage. Exactly. He didn't pay to get in. And he, and so he that's was, a way different. Exactly. And I understood what that meant. You feel exactly. me? Hold on, hold on. He was using, that, but that one uh, also had multiple meanings because we also have, and this is why I, I, mm -hmm. I would like us to, to have a, a episode about understanding the difference between, the, you know, understanding the Constitution, socialism, 
mm-hmm. uh, Marxism mm-hmm. and, and all this good stuff because the the the, the fists that we've adopted to mean black power really is a symbol of Marxism and communism. Mm-hmm. Unity. Well, that's enough. Unity is another one. That's we mm-hmm. adopted it or we received it as unity, but it really was a symbol of communism and Marxism. So we, we I, I think, I'm trying to remember what it was, it was it, but it goes it, back to it, symbolism it, and, it, and imagery because it, the it, reason why I laughed so hard when you said that brother Roscoe, not because I didn't take it serious, but I was a victim of that as well mm-hmm. because I didn't understand from, I, I didn't understand when they put Obama on pictures with Malcolm X and, and Marcus Garvey. I didn't understand when they were calling uh, Kaepernick himself Muhammad Ali. And, and Muhammad Ali really suffered for his beliefs. You know, Colin Kaepernick can't play football, but he got big-ass checks from Nike. You know, yeah, I'm not counting his... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Give me a second, give, give me a second yeah. bro. I'm mm-hmm. not counting his pockets... Mm-hmm. But what I'm saying is the symbolism may look or, or the imagery may look the same, but the stance for me, Ali's stance was extremely clear and he suffered for his stance. So when I asked the question similar to Brother Roscoe, and these weren't kids, these were folk our age or in the 30s talking about, well, what have you done? And I just said, well, I did this. I don't like saying what I've done. It doesn't matter what I've done. I'm trying to understand why you you you're praising this individual because he took a picture in the Black Panther outfit, and and, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but but do, do you understand what I'm saying? Because uh, I can right now pick out my hair or put on a beret or, or and a leather jacket and do this and everybody like, yo, that, that dude's down with the revolution. But I can have white kids. I could be selling black folk out by well, you could dozen. just not be a Black Panther. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, well, that was a uniform that? for the Black Panthers. So it's, I don't know. But so, well, no, so, so, Al, let me ask you. Yes, sir. Can we, all, can we all agree that one of the most profound things that happened and recent history, especially cultural wise, is social media, correct? Oh yeah. Can we agree on that, fellas? Yeah. yeah. All right. So with that being said, and still keeping it in tune with your previous question, um, with our behavioral cancel culture and things of that nature, I mean, and then even going into what you're talking about now, imagery, that's what everything is about. Um, it has basically taught our people that I almost i was thinking about this the other day i was talking to my kids while we were riding the other day the way things are now if you gave somebody a choice do you i'll give you two options you could live a good life but nobody won't know about it or you could send an image out to everybody that you're living a good life but you're really not which one would you choose? And nowadays, unfortunately, I think people would choose option two. Mm-hmm. It's because yeah. we're more concerned with what other people imagery. think. And because we're dealing with the imagery, you understand yeah. what I'm saying? And then when you're talking about um, our behavior in relations to cancel culture, look at, we know that the influence that social media has, and then look at the vices within that. So if I have a platform, that's going to represent a certain stance or viewpoint and somebody comes into that common area and questions me what button do i press block block that's, and the, that's problem. the end of that and that's that's, a, that's the that's, problem that, it looks like convenience it's sold as convenience mm-hmm. but that is a problem so even when i believe it was a roscoe when he was building on his age versus his adversary's age, yeah. who was a 25-year-old, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. they're coming up like that, which backtracks to your previous question on how this impacts our people. So, so don't don't you don't you find it crazy, Carl, that we did all this struggle to integrate and we're going back to segregation? 
I, that's that's basically what block is. So you just first people that's not on the same wavelength as you, you're blocking them. I get so it. You did all this struggling to integrate to the end result is that now we're looking to segregate. And that's why we're so polarized here in the nation right now. Yeah, I no, I get it. I agree, but I the only thing the reason why I made that that gas is because the the one thing that's been evident to me in the past couple of years is um, we've never really have been integrated. You look at the schools and the neighborhoods. I think that's all uh, an illusion. That's been such a, 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 a 